So here, as you can see, this is basically a real motherboard where we have the circuits. We have seen the circuits in the schematic. Now, here we have the circuits, real circuits. This is basically a 3 volt channel. And over here, we have 5 volt channel. So, and in every channel, as I told you before, you're going to find some component that are mandatory and obligatory for every channel in the motherboard. So, these components are the control IC. The first component is the control IC. Do you see here? We have TPEs 51120. The same as we have seen in the schematic. If we go back here, we have TPEs 51120. Okay, the same IC. Okay, so this is the control IC, and of course, around the control IC, you're gonna find, as you can see, many component. And me, I focus always in ceramic capacitors. I like ceramic capacitors. This is among the very important component in every motherboard. Ceramic capacitors. Why? Because ceramic capacitors always help me to troubleshoot and isolate the failure. Okay, for example, if this IC is shorted, okay, you cannot do a measurement directly on this IC. You cannot check it using the multimeter easily, like a resistor or ceramic capacitor or a diode or zener diode. No, it's not easy to check it. You can use the three methods that I shared with you in the previous video. The first method by the three methods that I want to remember and stick in your mind are the three methods that we use usually when we want to check whether an IC is good or not are. The first method is by checking the heat of the IC using just by touching its body or using your finger or of course if you have a thermal camera it's okay, you can use it and check the heat of the, the IC. This is the first method. If the heat is not normal, is very increased, automatically this IC is damaged. Replace it without any options. Okay? The second method is what? is by checking the ceramic capacitors around it. That's why I told you that ceramic capacitors are very important, are very important for any technician. We use it to troubleshoot and to, to identify the short circuit, okay? By using ceramic capacitors, this is the third method. So if you find, for example, that this one is shorted and this one is shorted and this one is shorted, means what? means this IC is shorted. Why? Because always the ceramic capacitor is connected to the IC. Do you see the part in one side and to the ground in the, in the other side? This one is connected to the IC in this side, to the ground in the other side. The same for this one, okay? So, the ceramic capacitors helps us to identify whether the IC is good or not. And the third method, okay, is by checking the inputs and the outputs. This is basically a very advanced method that I use, of course, but I prefer the second method, ceramic capacitors. As a beginner, try to use the first method by checking the heat and the second method by checking the ceramic capacitors around the ice. But for the third method, just for advanced people. Why? Because here you go in to check the inputs and the outputs using the multimeter and of course with motherboard power on and of course to do that you should get and have the data sheet or the schematic of the whole motherboard or just the data sheet of the IC and checking the inputs if you have all inputs and the outputs are missing means the IC is bad. But if you have a missing input, means the IC is not bad. You should look for the input first. For example, 
Here we have the input voltage, 19 volt. Here we have the enable signal. Here we have the clock signal, the shutdown signal. Here we have the power good signal. The power good, for example, should be 3.3 volt. And we find zero volt means what? The, the power good is an input. Is that mean the IC is bad? No. We should first get the, the uh, first the power good, the 3.3 volt. And then, and then uh, judge whether this one is good or not. Do you understand me? Okay. So basically, the component that is important in every circuit, we have the IC. If we go back to the schematic, we have the IC, MOSFETs, okay? So inductor here, and the voltage we have inductor. Okay, so we have here inductor and their capacitors. And of course the part where you can spot and check whether you have you have the right voltage or not. Okay. So here as you can see we have the IC. We have the inductor for these two channels. For three volt channel we have in the inductor and also for this for this channel we have inductor. Okay. Over then what we have capacitor. This is the electrolytic capacitor for 3 volt channel and also for 5 volt channel we have electrolytic capacitor. Then we have ceramic capacitor next to the electrolytic capacitor, as you can see C22. And of course here also we have ceramic capacitor here, okay? And then we have the pad. Do you see the pad here? We have pad 1. Here you can check whether you get 5 volt or not. And the pad basically for the 3 volts is somewhere here, okay? Okay, please, if you don't understand it, try to repeat it for the second time or even three times or even more because this is the principles, this is the basic or the working principle. If you understand this video, you gonna understand any circuit and you will, of course, troubleshoot and fix any motherboard. Because, for example, let's assume, for example, that for this motherboard, I have problem in this circuit, in 5 volt, 3 volt circuit. Easy. First, I should locate and identify the main component, including the IC, the, the MOSFETs, okay, for the MOSFETs, as you can see, here we have capacitor, here we have inductor, for 3 volts, okay, and for 5 volt circuit, we have inductor, we have two capacitors, here we have the IC, the MOSFETs are under, in the back of this, of this channel, okay, so, here I have a problem, means what, it could be, the problem could be here in the IC, the IC is bad or shorted or doesn't deliver or generate the control signals for this MOSFET. Or the problem can be in this one of these two MOSFETs. Or the problem can be one of this capacitor. Those and those, one of them are shorted or not. So if I check, for example, the pad here I, and I didn't find 5 volt, means I should troubleshoot this one. The IC by trouble by checking the head of the IC by checking the ceramic capacitors. I should be sure that these two capacitors are good or not, and the MOSFETs in the back also are good or not. Okay, so this is easy. So, thank you very much, guys. We're gonna see the rest of the course in the next video. Basically, uh, this course is a very huge course because in this course it will be. I will cover everything you can imagine, okay, in laptop preparing in this course. So if you follow with me, you will understand everything, troubleshooting the short circuit, troubleshooting no power motherboard, no data motherboard, uh, problem in the charge circuit, uh, no charging motherboard, etc. Please, for anyone doesn't yet subscribe, don't hesitate to subscribe for incoming videos and please don't forget to share the video and like the video and of course for anyone who, for anyone who want to join me in the Patreon page you are very welcome you are free if you want to join me you are free of course there I will 
or I upload in a daily basis many laptop schematics, many, many useful content, tricks and tips on how to repair laptop motherboards, etc. Thank you very much and please comment below if you have any question, post it in the comment below. Thank you very much and see you in the next video today.